<laughs> that's insane, man. Yeah. The GR Yaris is just one of those things. A small three cylinder, 1.6 turbo engine. It's short wheelbase and a hot hatch. Who doesn't love a hot hatch? This one has been heavily modified. It's got all the bells and whistles. I've got Wesley here today. He's got to talk us around his highly modified GI Yaris. Welcome back to another episode of MDTV, guys. Hey, Wesley, how you doing? Hey, good, thank you, good. Can you tell us a little bit about your Yaris, how it all started and how it all came to you and your love or your affinity for the Toyota GI Yaris? Yeah, so I had an old Golf back in the day, a Mark II, and then I bought a WRX after that, a, a G3 hatch. And I've always liked the nimbleness of like the hatchback with the all-wheel drive system, manual gearbox, just the way these type of cars curve around, you know, the mountain sides, on the track, even at the drags, you know, it hooks up and goes. So I've always envisioned something that was compact and high powered. And eventually Toyota came out with um, the GI Yaris. So they made a homologation vehicle. It was just like a dream come true. I was like, yeah, this is it. This is the one. Once I bought it, I was like, yeah, this is the car I'm gonna, gonna throw all my money in. <laughs> so my idea of a perfect car to me would be 70% um, track and 30% street. And this is it. So I've, um, I went to Lamb Speed Racing talked to Charles and he's like, yeah, we're developing something for the vehicle, something special. I entrusted him with the car and he came with a turbo kit for it. At the moment, it's stock motor. Uh, so stock piston, stock head, stock crank, stock block, stock intake manifold, stock head gasket, stock valves, basically stock car with a turbo on it um, and fuel pump to, to get the fuel there. So I did a bit of aero to it because I wanted to go to World Time Attack. Uh, as you can see, I competed last year. Um, All right, how'd you go? I did okay. Yeah. <laughs> First time out on the track. Charles thought I was a bit crazy because I didn't do any testing when the turbo kit and everything went on. I just told him, look, I'm just going to full send it, see how it goes. And he was like, you're crazy. You need to do some <laughs> testing. I'm like, I'll be right. I'll be right. <laughs> and he, he, it was crazy because um, the car kept sliding from underneath me yeah. from just, just the sheer power of just putting your foot down. It just it loves to slide around the corners. From when you dropped it off at Lamb Speed Racing to when you picked it up, how long was that process? Uh, it was very long because uh, that was my fault because I kept telling him to do other things to the car. Um, <laughs> the mayor's will story, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So <laughs> I'll, I'll be like Googling things, YouTubing things. And I'm like, oh, that's not a bad idea. Realistically, I dropped the car off in July and got it back in October. So that was the actual time frame. Let's start off. I mean, normally I start off with the visual mods, but yep. every all the visual parts on this car looks like they're functional. Yes, so let's yeah. go through the functional aero on this car. The functional man. aero on this yeah. car. Okay, so I've got the canards at the front here just for a bit of uh, front end downforce. They look like they're pretty high up though, so is it a really significant difference? Um, so I'm no aero expert, yeah. Um, but if it looks like it works, you know, it, it, probably, it, it works. probably works. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm seeing just like on either side of the intercooler, are those functional brake ducts? Yeah, functional brake ducts. So oh, um, in the GI Yaris Rally, it comes with um, these ducts that basically direct to the um, brake discs. Uh, mine's not a rally, but you can buy the brake ducts separately and just chuck it on there. But yeah, it's made for it. Well, let's talk about the back, because that giant vortex wing, man, that, yeah. that caught my attention as soon as yeah. you pulled in. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite pieces, the vortex wing. Uh, it's adjustable as well. This was a year and a half wait. I've always wanted it. I've, I was like, yeah, I, ever since um, Lamp Speed had it on their car and I saw the significance it had around the track at Sydney Motorsport Park. They were hitting turn one, like over 200 Ks an hour. Holy crap. Yeah, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> That's it works. scary, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and have, you, have you tampered much with the angle of attack? Um, so at the moment it's on like um, just a street mode. Um, yep. So it's, it's minimal aggression. It's just about half, half, 50, 50 at the yeah. moment. But you, you, you do feel like more traction in the rear when you're like, you know, going over 140, 150, you start feeling it a bit, uh, minus the, the aero you feel basically just the rear end being light. Just looking at the shape of it, man, it's like a spoon. Yes. Like the way that it, it collects air, yeah. it collects the air, do you feel it pushing down pretty? Yeah, so especially on the highway, yeah. you really feel it pushing out. So I've tested it on full attack mode and you really feel the negative pressure under the spoiler sucking it, Damn, sucking it that's down. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, when so the suspension at the moment is pretty is on soft in the rear in terms of dampening. Yeah. So, oh, so you can full feel it squatting. You, you feel it squat, yeah, just just on the highway. That's crazy. Other than that, man, there's probably not too many visual mods, hey. Yeah, I it's think just that's the functional it. area at the front and the giant wing at the back. Yeah, yeah. It looks so good, man. Thank you. Like thank it you. looks like it's ready to go. Yeah, it looks fast standing still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank Let's you. Let's talk about the um the wheels because they look so thick, bro. 
Yeah, so I ordered these um, these wheels in. Um, you can go a bit wider. I went with the nine instead of the nine and a half wide. I had two six five semi six on it. Uh, they're on two five fives at the moment now on um, ADO fifty two tires, which is the regulation tires for War Time Attack. Um, but yeah, they're very grippy for the car's weight. Around twelve hundred kilos with a two five five tire. So front this car's only with twelve hundred kilos. Yeah, so oh, twelve ninety wow. from factory. Yeah and I've stripped the interior a bit, so it's a bit lighter than that. I do yeah. have a roll cage in it, which does add like around 20 something kilos. So my best guess is around, you know, 1250, 1260. Wow. And are the brakes stock as well? Yeah, these are actually the stock brakes. Yeah, I've got, I got the new rotors. I've got, I've got the brake lines as well to yep. suit. Um, new brake fluid. And for stock brakes, they look massive, man. Yeah, yeah, upgraded disc. Yeah, so yeah. the old discs couldn't survive the track. Yeah, of course not. So <laughs> I replaced them, replaced the pads, did all that stuff. And it stops on a dime now. Let's skip everything. Let's go straight to your engine bay, man. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll pop the bonnet for you. Yeah, sure. There's not really much to see. Yeah, so surprisingly, it's mostly stock in terms of the engine itself. It's basically just the downpipe, turbo you know the headers that go to it all designed by um, land speed racing besides the garrett turbo so it's a stock engine in terms of its pistons rods crank block head intake manifold all stock and it's just got like um 30 pounds of boost into it 30 pounds 30 pounds Yikes. of boost and it's taking the, the stock block and stock yes. internals taking 30 pounds yeah 30 pounds so i did have it on 32 pounds i told charles look make it look as stock as possible and he's like that's that's no no issue there and it does uh, look stock, apart from that giant pod filter. Yeah, besides this pod filter, um, I try to keep this legal as well. So it's uh, it's enclosed once you close the, the bonnet down. Yeah, so you've got like catch cans and stuff like that, which is also uh, within the enclosure. It's running a MoTeC ECU as well. Um, so been the old uh, ECU. I did have a piggyback before and the car made uh, 206 kilowatts. That's that's your basic intake, um, wow. turbo back exhaust. Wow, so well to just yeah so stock they make um 155 kilowatts to the wheels when i first got the car uh thousand k's break in i didn't bother with i was like <laughs> I, I had the itch you know <laughs> so clutch dump when i got out of the the car park <laughs> you know? and it did a 4.9 second zero to 100 on um on the drag wow yeah stock completely stock i'm like wow this is technically a four second car to 100. once i did all the mods i picked up the car i picked up the car when it was like torrential rain Oh, really? Yeah, torrential rain when I picked up the car and I'm like, oh goodness, it's going to be sketch, you know, because yeah. I was itching as well, I was like, all this power. I saw the dyno sheet, you know, I was like, yeah, I want to I want to give it a hit. And then I went onto the M7, left it in fifth gear, dabbed on the, the throttle and I just decided to kick out a little bit. Oh my I'm like, gosh. okay, this is serious. You know, this car's a bit serious, so I the waited for it Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the, the giant front mount that you've got in the, the oil cooler. Yeah, so basically, uh, after tracking the car a few times, you know, just looking after looking at the data logs, you know, uh, we had oil temps a bit too high, intake temps a bit too high. So um, Plasma Man came out with this um, intercooler. I think it's around like 30% larger in terms of its core. So it's actually got a lot of depth more than its its height. So it can be deceiving, but yeah, it it um it does cool cool the intake temps quite well. The oil cooler does its job. It, it probably dropped the the oil temps by about like 15 degrees on track, wow. which is which is brilliant. That's that's, that's what I need. And what about the fuel system? You said you had a little bit of yeah, so the fuel, the fuel system, I've got a surge tank in the back with a bigger fuel pump. I'm not exactly too sure how big yep. the fuel pump is. Bigger port injectors as well. From yep. memory, I think it's around 1000 cc. Don't quote me on that, but roughly around that size for the port injectors. Direct injection is stock. It's still the, the stock direct injection. So it's got both direct and port injection. Yes, it's got two. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's got flex fuel at the moment too. So you can run E85 or 98. The best I get on 98 is probably 200 and 50 to 300 k's on a tank <laughs> it's not a big flex but yeah. you know um not very fuel cotton <laughs> pun intended pun right intended. yeah exactly exactly it's, and on on full ed5 you'll be lucky to get 200 out of the tank but that's not what i bought the car for really yeah. i bought it for fun so what's the final power figure that you've got after the tube yeah so a year and a bit ago on the dyno it made 306 wheel kilowatt that's crazy man yeah, um, for a small little <coughs> thing like this yeah small little thing like insane. this insane yeah and um it runs 10 seconds down the quarter mile far out so it has been tuned on the track um a bit more so after the drags it well, during the drags, it got tuned a bit more. And on uh, City Most World Park track during World Time Attack, it got tuned even more again, just to die out the little gremlins. Well, that's pretty cool. So you had the team with you. Yeah, I had the team with me. I'm a motorsport. Uh, Phil is a wizard. That guy's a genius. Um, I drove the car uh, when I picked it up and I was like, oh, I've got a little bit of a, something funny around here. 
literally, you know, in the middle of the night, he'll, he'll turn his laptop on, and I'll plug my laptop in, like, you know, a few hundred k's away from him, and he just tunes it from, uh, from his computer, looking at the logs, and in the comfort of my home, and I'm like, and I took it out for a drive, and I'm like, it's perfect now. Damn, yeah. that's insane, dude. Yeah, so it's probably making a bit more power than 300 something. Yeah. I'm not too sure how much, but like I'm saying, it, it was being developed again on, on the track. Yeah, yeah, so it's probably making it a tiny bit more. So uh, as you can see, this, this enclosure here is to hold the, the surge tank for extra fuel. And I've got the lightweight battery as well. So this weighs like seven or six kilos, that, that battery, very, very light battery. So this roll cage is Ministry of Fabrication. When they designed it, um, they designed it, I'm pretty sure through 3D scanning as well. I think safety is sexy, you know? Yeah. like. <laughs> in the chance that you do roll over on his head yeah it's, you know very stiff yeah. what about your suspension mods your coilovers drop yeah bars, so at arms. the moment it's on um street coilovers from shockworks on the street you, you can't complain they're they're yeah. beautiful on the street i have i have overdriven them uh, on the track which is fine because they're not that's not what it's for right it held up very well against the competition on on track you overdrove its capability yeah overdrove like it needs to be more stiff for the yeah it needs a bit more stiffness it needs a bit it needs rebound control it's just got dampening control and stuff like that yeah. I, I really need the rebound control yeah if you look at the videos i've posted on my instagram you can see the car bouncing around uh, it doesn't have that that tweak that that it quite needs on, yeah. on track what about the sway bars anything done to the sway bars uh, so it's got arms? thicker rear sway bars Cusco rear sway bars the front sway bars is still stock so i wanted to keep the front end stock i just like the the softness of the front end being not as twitchy as the rear yeah i like to carry the rear through the corner yeah and that um, having a softer front will allow you to get more oversteer and stuff. Hey? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And what's more fun than oversteer? Yeah. yeah. Especially Nothing. in the all-wheel drive car. Yeah. <laughs> this is the HKS Super Turbo cat back exhaust, but I've technically it's a diff back now because it's straight pipe to the turbo. Uh, a lamp speed, lamp speed racing exhaust system attached to the HKS. Let's go inside and we we'll yeah. talk about your gearbox yeah. and yeah. the stuff you've done to the inside. So this is um, my cockpit. <laughs> These stock seats that you've left in the passenger seat, that yeah. looks amazing. Surprisingly, they're heated seats. So during winter, really? they're really nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, heated seats. But I needed the the extra support for my for my hooning. So, <laughs> yeah, so you got a um, fixed bucket seat. Yeah, fixed bucket seat on the bride. And basically down the line further on, uh, I actually broke the gearbox in this car. What? Yeah, so when I was making the 300, plus kilowatts at the wheels, hammering through the gears, and wow. all of a sudden, you know, the gearbox broke, and yeah. I had to baby it home from Wollongong. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually heard of a few gearbox issues, even with like a light tune, yeah. or not pushing too much even, power over stock. Even completely stock, um, people have second gear issues and stuff like that, but yeah, I don't think they were quite focusing on the gearbox, because in rally, because as you know, it's a homologation vehicle. They just chuck out the old gearbox and put a sequential in it. Yeah, and that's so, exactly what you've done. That's eh? exactly what I did. I'm like, well, if the engineers think it's it's perfect for it, yeah, go yep. for it. So this is a Drenthe sequential with a custom uh, gear set for City Motorsport Park. Um, oh, right. So you can tune the settings for, like, is there, Yeah, so... You can tune the, the gear ratios. On order, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's and cool. I, I used, uh, I basically piggybacked off Charles because he's the, he's the wizard behind it all. And he knew exactly what gears, gear ratio need, I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and how does a how does a sequential work? Do you still need to step on the clutch? You do. So when the car is stationary, you do need to put the clutch in because it's uh, it's dog engagement with uh, with no synchros. So it must be very violent when you're putting it into. Gear it's very it's hate. very violent. Yeah, yeah. It, you'll see how violent it is. <laughs> oh, dude, that is so violent, man. Yeah. What? <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah, and plus it's got the uh, twin plate clutch with the single flywheel mass as yeah, well. Oh, right. Because when so you were pulling in, I was wondering if it was twin plate because it was so. Loud. Yeah, so loud. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with that, that paired, paired with this, it's not the easiest thing to drive, but it is one of the most aggressive ways to to go through the gears, really, um, as quick as possible when it comes to a manual. I can see just where your speedo is. You've got a yeah aftermarket dash. Yeah. So this is the the Motec um, Motec dash. Uh, I believe it's the seven inch. Yeah, the C one two seven. So it does have the Motec ECU. It does all the logging for me. So it will show me my lap times. It will show me my drag times. It will show me my ethanol content. It will show me my steering wheel angle. It will show me the even the steering wheel angle. Yeah, it shows Insane. the steering wheel. Angle. Yeah, wheel speed for each corner of the wheel. What? Yeah, everything. It shows me all the temps that you, you could dream of. And uh, Phil has put in uh, a few safety 
features in there as well for me. Um, you know, like in F1, it will tell you uh, car engine, too hot, car too hot, stuff yeah. like that. You know, and it's all controlled with this OEM steering wheel as oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. So I can adjust the boost pressure. I can adjust a lot of things on on the OEM steering wheel. Dude, that's insane. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> everything you. is like quite stock, but it's yeah. so functional. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah, only yeah. changed what you needed to change. Yeah. And that's right. I'm keen to see what this feels like on the road, bro. I'll take some B-rolls and then we'll go for a drive. Hey. That is so clunky, man. But it sounds insane. What's making the whine from the... Uh, the straight car gears, the, right. dog, the dog gears. Oh, <laughs> dude, that is so violent, man. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, that's bumpy ass. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pump it here. Yeah. Feels like a rocket ship, yeah. man. That felt like a rally car. Oh, The brakes are so strong. The amount of G-forces. Oh, oh shit, that's scary, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta hold on. Oh shit, that's scary. Man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, and I love the way this thing feels. And I can, I don't know, I I can feel that this is a short wheelbase kind of car. Yeah, it's yeah. turning so quick, and the yeah, radius like, is so small. Like it's just, it's plus, like a go kart. Yeah, bro. the wide tires, the short wheelbase. You yeah, know. dude, that's actually scary, man. Yeah, and like even when you're shifting, it, you don't feel it dip. It just still nah, keeps it just, going. No, it just bang, bang, bang. It just goes. Oh yeah. my god, that's the you know the, the sequential. Crash. Yeah, the boost never drops. It just yep. keeps going. It sounds more aggressive. <laughs> That's insane. See how the it's really loud, the, yeah. the shifts? The clunking. Yeah. Uh, and is that the diff working at the back as well? Yeah, so it's got front and rear LSDs. If you kind of feel the revolutions of the diff yeah. changing according to well, with your box. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it tightens up as well. It feels like it's got a lot more power, even when you're like ba 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 ba. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of like almost short shifting it too. Oh, dude, that would feel so scary on the racetrack, man. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Oh, and you've got harnesses for the racetrack. Harnesses, well, yeah, see. six point harness. Oh my god, that's insane. Thanks for coming out, bro. That's all right. I've not felt anything like this, bro. Is this the fastest hatch you've been in? Uh, 100%. <laughs> the fastest car I've been in. Yeah, the thank you, thank car you. On the channel so far. Thank you, thank you. And it's stock motor, so. I can't believe that, man. Yeah, I so, can't yeah, believe it. Yeah. Dude, I, I can't explain that feeling. When I think that the power is gonna stop, it just keeps pulling. Like when you're shifting, I'm expecting it to dip for a little bit, yeah. but it just keeps pulling. And even on like fourth gear, fifth gear that you were on, yeah. it just kept pulling, man. Like it had no end to it. Bloody insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that's insane, man. Yeah. So that was on basically oh. 2,000 RPM. Yeah, all the way up. All the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, see how it's very, very linear. Yeah. I'm glad and, you enjoy it. Oh, thanks, Drew. I enjoy it so much. Yeah, and yeah. The sound of it as well. Everything, everything gets louder together. And yeah. like, I hate when cars just get loud, but the pitch doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. But you could hear the turbo whine. You could hear the gearbox whine. Yeah, yeah. You could hear the diffs and everything just work. It sounds so good, bro. What a visceral experience, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, yeah. Oh, I, love, I love sharing this car with people. Cause... Yeah. And what? Do you, like, why is it so hard to get into reverse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just weak, bro. <laughs> no, it's just oh. it's just the box, you know. All right. Oh, yeah. is that characteristic of yeah, the yeah. box? Thanks so much for coming out on the channel, That's dude. Right. Thanks for having me, bro. Really Thanks appreciate for it. Me. Follow Wesley on his Instagram channel, guys. Thank Thanks you. for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace, guys. Peace, peace. <laughs>